you have been blessed by this message, please visit our website, neilthomasministries.com and click on the donate button. Thanks for coming to church. Appreciate it. Know you come voluntarily. And we know you come because you love the Lord. So thanks for coming. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you from the Word of God. Jesus in John's Gospel said, Don't let your heart be full of trouble. You've believed in God said, now believe in me. Let not your heart be full of trouble. You believe in God, then believe in me. That's an amazing statement, isn't it? If you want to get rid of trouble out of your heart, you've got to believe in Jesus. He said, you believe in God, but you've still got trouble in your heart. And I know that there are people watching and listening and people here right now who've got trouble in their heart. And the only way to get rid of that trouble is to bring Jesus into your heart. Let not your heart be full of trouble. You believe in God, now believe in me, the man who died on the cross. That's amazing. That absolutely staggers me when I think about it, how that just believing in Jesus can get rid of trouble. <laughs> and you know, lots of people have got troubled, troubled hearts. They believe in God. There's millions and millions of people believe in God. The Jewish nation believes in God. They've got trouble in their hearts tonight. And the people who live in Lebanon... Christian and Muslim believe in God but they've got murderous troubles in their heart. Brother against brother. They're troubled about their nation. Of course the Jews are the same. <laughs> they're full of trouble. The world is full of trouble. And Jesus said to the Christians, don't let your hearts be troubled. I've got an answer to trouble. Believe in God, but also believe in me, he says. Just believe in me. I am the solution to trouble. But the world finds it very difficult to hand the trouble in their hearts over to Jesus. When trouble comes between us in our marriages and families, in relationships, we war. Because of trouble. We're troubled. Life is full of trouble. But Jesus said, don't let your heart be full of trouble. Now, how does Jesus get rid of trouble out of a man or woman or young person's heart? Well, this is what he says. Behold, I stand at the heart's door. Oop, I'll have to find up here. And knock. I'm knocking. Let me in. You believe in me and you believe in my Father, but I'm still outside the door of your heart. Because I want to tell you something tonight. If Jesus lives in your heart, trouble can't live there. If Jesus lives in your heart, trouble cannot live in your life. Because he's the Prince of Peace. He's the King of Peace. And trouble can't live where he lives. 
trouble cannot live where Jesus lives. And many, many years and years ago, an artist, his name was Holman Hunt, painted a beautiful picture of a doorway and the creeper bush has grown over the doorway, but you can still see the doorway. And he painted Jesus standing there with a lantern in his hand, knocking on the door. Knocking on the door. But see, there was no doorknob on the outside of the door. It was only on the inside of the door. And Jesus couldn't get in there until the person inside opened the door and let him in. And you know, many of us, even now, while I'm speaking, have got trouble in our hearts, but we haven't been willing to open the door to let the Master Jesus in to fix that trouble. Behold, I stand at the heart's door and knock. If any man will let me in, I will come in and be with him and fellowship with him, and I'll bring him to peace. Amen? Amen. So tonight, if you've got any trouble in your life, what it's really saying is that you believe in God, you love God. You believe in Jesus, you love Jesus. But he's not in your heart. You see, you and I have to understand something, that when Jesus died on a cross about that size, he came to die to earn the right to come and live inside your heart. Jesus died on a cross about that size to earn the right to live in your heart and my heart. Amen. People have got all sorts of fancy ideas why Jesus died. Jesus died to be able to come and live in your heart and kick sin and trouble and everything out and take up control in your heart. That's why he died. He did not die just to make you a millionaire. He did not just die to make you healthy and wealthy. He died on a cross like that so he could come and knock on your heart's door and ask to come in, and if you will let him in, he'll come in. That's why he died, to live in your heart. His whole ministry was a heart ministry. I find him when he begins his public ministry, he was walking into people's hearts. Take the story of Matthew, the tax gatherer, the cheat in the tax office, in the village tax office, and people had to pay tax when they entered the village. They had to go through a gate and they had to pay tax to be able to get into the village. And he was one of the chief rip-offs. And Jesus said, Matthew, if he was alive today, he would have said, Matty, remember me from school, synagogue school? Because he was at his own village. And he said, I'm coming to your house tonight coming to visit with you, mate. What was Jesus going to visit for? To check him out? He already knew who he was. Was he going to check how bad he was? No, he already knew how bad he was. He's going to his house to have a heart conversation. Now, we do not know what Jesus said to this criminal with all his criminal mates. Jesus said, gather all the publicans and sinners and prostitutes, fill up your house with all your bad mates. I'm coming tonight to talk to you. They made a feast and Jesus came. Now I don't know what he said, but one thing I know, he entered into the heart of Matthew. Matthew's life changed when Jesus came into his home and he let Jesus enter into his heart. He gave up all the bad stuff and he said, Master, I want to follow you. See, Jesus is in the heart business. He's in the business of entering into a man and woman's heart. 
That's where he wants to live. That's why he died on a cross, so he can live in there. He wants to come in there with the blood that he shed at Calvary and clean up our emotions. Because you see, our heart is where our emotions are. We live by our hearts, our feelings. We live by our emotions. Our emotions make us who we are. And Jesus knows that without him living in our hearts, our emotions will cause us trouble and drive us into trouble and despair and disaster. Men's hearts cause them to murder. Women's heart caused them to murder. It's not that long ago since that woman in Melbourne drowned her little baby in the bath and then knifed it. She had trouble in her heart. She needed Jesus in there. See what trouble can do? Our jails, our lockups are full of men and women trouble in their hearts. Matthew had a lot of trouble in his heart, a lot of guilt, a lot of trouble. But this night Jesus came to his house and he opened his heart's door to Jesus. And whatever Jesus said to him, he opened the door and let Jesus come into the, his heart and live in his life. And he wrote us a beautiful gospel called the Gospel According to St. Matthew. Not a bad book for a criminal. Not a bad book for a man who ran prostitute houses and was the chief of sinners in his area. Not a bad book, eh? Gospel of Matthew. What changed this man? And I read some of the wonderful things that he, he writes about what Jesus can do when you let him come into your heart. Matthew's book is full of it. You see, he experienced Jesus living in his heart and he experienced the change. And he followed Jesus and he watched Jesus going into people's hearts all the time and changing their lives. Amen. And he wrote a book about it. Biggest gospel. More chapters, more words than any other gospel. He tells us that one day Jesus is walking along the road and the Holy Spirit said, look up a tree. And he looked up and you've heard this story. There was a little dwarf man up there called Zacchaeus. And Jesus inquired who he was and there was a bit of trouble trying to find out who he was. But when he got his name, he said, Zacchaeus, come down out of the tree Go home and get some food ready. I'm coming to your house. Did Jesus have to go there to get food? No. He wanted to get into his house so he could get into his heart. And whatever Jesus said, I don't know. But I know it was powerful and I know that it opened up the heart's door of Zacchaeus and I know that whatever Jesus said to that man changed his life forever. Amen? Amen. This is the business Jesus is in. And that man, he had robbed from people. He had been in crime. He was a dreadful person. But Jesus got into heart talk with him. And all I know is that as Jesus stood up to leave the house, Zacchaeus stood up and said, Master, Whatever I've done bad to anybody, I'll, re I'll replace it. What I've stolen, I'll give back more. He'd had a heart change, hadn't he? From being the local robber and thief, he's not only going to stop being a thief, he's going to give back all he ever took and give back even more to the people that he stole from. Amen? He'd been a good investor. And let's say he stole a million dollars, he had three million because he said, I'll give back double whatever I've stolen. So he must have made some good profit on what he stole. Jesus, just talking to him at his meal table, entered into his heart and he opened his heart up to Jesus and he changed. And when you get to heaven, you'll be able to go and meet him. Amen? Do you want to go and meet Zacchaeus? I do. 
I want to find out what on the earth Jesus said at his meal table that changed his life. He opened up his heart and he changed. And all his troubles were gone. Even his guilt and all his shame and all his pain and all his bad life was gone because he let Jesus come into his heart. Oh, there's just so many stories, aren't there? I love this story. Jesus has died, risen again, and as far as the St. Peter and the disciples are concerned, he's gone missing. And Peter, the man who yet hadn't let Jesus into his heart, or didn't understand about letting Jesus into his heart, said to all the disciples, he's gone. He's finished. He promised us. He's finished. Let's go back to our old way of life. Let's go back fishing. Let's get back into the fleet. And let's forget it because he didn't keep his word. They're out fishing. They toiled all night. Hadn't got anything. And Peter's looking to the seashore as they were swooping around with their nets again. And he said, there's a ghost. And John was on the boat with him, St. John, and he said, no, 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 that's the Lord. And he said, oh, no, he's caught me out red-handed. Oh, no. And he was naked, put his coat on, he jumped into the water and he swam in until he could get his feet on the sand and then he walked out and he fell down in front of Jesus and said, depart from me, I am a filthy, dirty, wicked man. I am no good. See, he was talking about his heart. I love this story. And Jesus said, look, this is, okay, come over by the fire. See, Jesus had already created a fire. He already created some fish and he already created some bread and loaves. And it was all there. And he said, come over, sit by the fire, you're cold. Come and sit down here. He said, eat a little bit. So Peter eats a bit. And the Lord says, feel a bit better, Pete? <laughs> yeah, that was good, thank you. He said, I've got a question for you. Listen to the question. This is a heart question. Listen, how much do you love me in your heart? See, Jesus is going into this man's heart. He was digging right into, he's knocking on the door, trying to get into this man's heart. He says, how much do you love me? Peter says, you know, looking up at the Lord, he says, you know, you know, I like you. Jesus said, oh, look, Eat on. Say us a bit more. And Jesus comes to me again the second time and he says, excuse me, had enough yet? I've got this question I must ask you. See, this was important to Jesus because he's leaving the earth and this is the last encounter he's going to have personally with his man on his own. And he says, Peter, I've got to ask you again, how much do you love me? So he's back on the heart again, knocking on the door again of this fisherman. <sighs> Peter takes a deep breath and he says, uh, Master, you understand. I'm your friend. See, Jesus is still digging into this man's heart, trying to get into his heart, trying to do heart business with this wild fisherman. And so Jesus says, eat on. And the Bible says he came back to him a third time and said, are you full now? And Peter must have been full by now. Jesus knew, don't ask a man to make hard decisions without some food in his belly. And he says, yeah. Jesus said, well, this is the last time I'm going to ask you. Jesus is knocking on his heart like he's here tonight knocking on your heart. And he says to Peter, Peter, Do you really, really love me? With all your heart? 
Do you love me with your, all your heart, Peter? This is important to me because I'm leaving the earth and going to heaven. And I've got the keys to give to you for the kingdom of God and for the gospel. And I have to know, do you really, really love me? Open up your heart and let me in. <laughs> and Peter bows his head and says, Lord, you know the inside of my heart. So he opened the door. He said, you can look into my heart. You know my heart. You know that I love you. And Jesus says, that's good. See, Jesus visited Peter's heart that night. Have you ever had a heart visit from Jesus? Oh, you believe in God. Oh, you believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, you may take Holy Communion. You may read your Bible. You may serve God with your life, but have you had a visit and let him in to your heart? Because when he comes into your heart, he changes it. Peter stood up from that fire, a little more conversation, and he was now a changed man. See, he let Jesus into the center of his heart. You know my heart, Lord. Have a look. The door's open. And Jesus was satisfied that Peter knew. You see, up until then, Peter thought he loved Jesus. He had love in his heart, but the door was shut. And do you know when the door's shut, love can't get out? And it can't get in. That night, or that day, that early morning actually, St. Peter turned the handle on the inside of his door and swung the door open to Jesus. And Jesus entered into his heart. Oh, many times Jesus tried to get into the disciples' hearts. I, I read the Gospels and I see many times he knocked on their heart's door, but they wouldn't open their hearts. And, there, and he said this, he gave them stories. Every time he tried and they didn't open their hearts, he gave them a parable, a story. And, and, and he, he gave like a certain man this, or a certain farmer this, or a certain this. And he gave them stories to show them that they hadn't opened their heart's door yet. And one day, he was telling them, look, God the Father's opened his heart towards you, but have you opened your heart's door to him? And they hadn't. They hadn't. They'd loved God. They'd been brought up in religion. They'd been dutiful in their synagogue attendance. They'd sung the Jewish hymns. They believed in God. But they never opened the heart store. So he said, I want to tell you a story. There was a certain man, a farmer, extremely wealthy, and he had two sons. And the younger of them said, I'm going to take my portion of what my father owns, and I'm going to clear out with it and go and have a good time. The older son stayed faithful. But the younger son fled. And the Bible tells us to prostitutes and to clubs and to all sorts of riotous living. And he spent all the money. That doesn't sound very good, does it? But there's a good part to the story. He tells us that the father's heart was opened every day for this boy to come back. He's showing us God. And he said the father would go out every day and he'd stand on the roadway with his arms open, looking down the road, hoping that his boy would come back. What a heart the father has. And one day, praise God, in the pig pen, 
when he was so hungry and he wanted to eat the pig food. He was so starving and he smelt and he was in a bad way. He was at the bottom, man. He had hit the pit. And he said to himself, I'll go back and I'll just be a servant in my father's house. I'm not worthy to be called his son. He won't welcome me anyhow. But I'm hungry. So I'll go back and just work for him like a, an employee. And the boy makes his way and he's coming up the road towards his father's farmhouse. And he looks. And there's a man standing with his arms open and his heart open. And the boy arrives and the father runs and hugs him, kisses him, and welcomes him back into his heart and made him as one of his important sons. You see, that father represents God. God tonight's got his arms open. His heart is open to you. But you've got to come to him and bring your heart back to him. And this boy brought his heart back and said, Father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I am no good, I'm filthy. Depart from me, I'm evil. Just make me a slave in your, in your farmhouse. My father said, no, you're my boy. The father's heart was open. Well, I praise God for that story because that young man opened his heart to his father and he was reinstated completely and the past forgotten. That's God. And God opened his arms on that cross for you. God hung his arms out for you and me. And he opened his heart, and the Catholics are very good at the bleeding heart of Jesus. He opened his heart. God opened his heart. But he's waiting for men and women in his churches around the world to open their hearts to him come and let him in he wants to live in your heart because he wants to get rid of jealousy he doesn't like jealousy there are women in this meeting who are full of jealousy men have got jealousy There are people listening to me, watching me, you've got jealousy too. And you've got anger and lust and unforgiveness. But the Father's here tonight. He wants you to open up your heart's door because if you'll open up your heart's door, he'll let Jesus come in. And you know what? None of that can live with Jesus. Will you open your heart to him? You're a Christian. You're born again. Maybe you've been a Christian years. Years and years and years. Maybe you were born into a church somewhere. You've always believed in God. You've always believed in Jesus. But boy, you haven't lived right. There's times when you've been really nasty. And you really wanted to pay back. And you really wanted to get somebody because they hurt you. Jealousy, envy, malice, anger and hatred. These are the things that live in the human heart. And the only way to get them out is to open the door and let Jesus come in and throw them out because they can't live where he lives. So listen, have you got any jealousy? You a jealous person? Oh, I meet it all the time. You know what, I get so upset, Mr. Thomas. My husband's over there talking to another woman in the church and he should be with me. What's he doing over there? What are they saying? I want to know what they're saying. I'm jealous. I'm envious. He's mine. What's he doing? I've heard women, wives, say about their husbands, I don't know why he just doesn't go and sleep with those women. You know what that is? 
envy, jealousy, and malice. And they say they're born again spirit-filled Christians. Jesus calls that rubbish. Jesus calls that dirty. There are men too. I've met men that are so jealous over their wife, man. So jealous. So envious. So polluted by the flesh. And they say they're Christians. I've seen pastors like that and I've seen elders like that. I've seen evangelists like that. I've seen missionaries like that. And I've seen that stuff in the heart destroy them. I've seen it destroy them. Oh, they believe in God. Yes, they believe in Jesus. Yes, they believe in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, they believe in praise and worship. Oh, yes, they believe in the Lord's table. Oh, they believe in giving. But they've never opened their heart's door to Jesus. You never get the victory unless you let him come and rule in your heart. Now there's lots and lots of scripture. I won't take the time to give them to you. There's lots and lots and lots of scripture. And Paul writing about Christianity and the Christian life, he says, I pray, I'm believing that you may let Christ come and dwell in your hearts richly. You let Christ be the occupier of your heart so he deals with you and all that's in there. He says, that you may know him, that you may be affected by his life inside your life. See, the whole name of the game in Christianity is Christ coming to live his life inside us. Is he? Is he? Is he living his life inside your heart? In your emotions? He died to come and live inside your emotions. Your heart is where your emotions are. It's the seat of your emotions. Not your faith, your emotions. And Jesus wants to live in the middle of your emotions so he can take control of them and clean them up and deliver you from the fall of your emotions where you'll be able to forgive where you'll be able to love where jealousy, malice, envy hatred, anger is gone from your heart you know it's terrible to have a heart that's sick sick of all those things and Peter writes about them in 1st Peter he says malice envy jealousy hatred these are all of the devil and the devil put them in your heart before you were born he put the seed in your heart while you were in your mother's at pregnancy, at conception, he seeded your heart with these things. And you can't get rid of them, only Jesus can. Is he in your heart? Doesn't matter how you've messed up in the past, tonight's the night when you can open your door of your heart and let Jesus come in. You know, when he deals with your emotions, then that deals with your thoughts. And that deals with your actions. You see, what a man thinks and what a man says comes out of his heart, Jesus said. What a man thinks and how he behaves and what he says is coming up out of his heart. And Jesus came to die to be able to live in my heart and your heart. He rose again. He defeated all that stuff that was in our hearts. He went to hell and he went, came back. And he went through death and he came back. And he rose again so he can come and live in my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Behold, I stand at the heart's door and knock. If any man can hear me and lets me in, I will come into him and change him. Are you changed? Or well, you're still carrying some of this stuff. Well, I'm like my mother. 
can't help it. It's like my mother and Marnie's. It's like my father. I'm like Morelli's. You're like Satan. Because your rallies have been like it a long time. Generations of it. Oh, oh, they believed in Jesus, they believed in Mary, they believed in the saints, they believed in the angels, they believed in God, they believed in the cross, they believed in the blood. They believed in the resurrection. But they are nasty, horrible people. Jails are full of them. Jails are full of them. Nations are full of it. And I'm prepared to say tonight, the trouble in Israel and Lebanon will never be solved until Jesus comes into those nations and takes over the heart of the nation. My Bible tells me so. There is no solution to the Middle East only Jesus Christ can come into those nations and solve this problem and the Bible tells us that that's the only way it's going to happen. The only hope for Australia, for the world, but more importantly for you, is to let this man Jesus into your heart. Oh, he's in your mind. He's in your faith. He's in your belief. But is he personally in your heart? We sing a little song. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. I love that bit. Come in to stay. It's not just a visit. Matthew only had him visit his home for a night but when he visited Matthew's heart he stayed for life Zacchaeus only had Jesus for a short meal but when Jesus visited his heart he stayed for his lifetime and eternity you see our hearts are going to live forever our hearts what is our hearts? It's our emotions. That's what drives us. That's what controls our thinking. That's what controls our speech. That's what controls our actions, our emotions. And I want to tell you, without Jesus, our emotions are fallen and in a mess. And tonight we need to open our hearts and ask Jesus to come and live in our emotions. If he lives in there, you know what he's going to do? He's going to teach you to forgive. It's going to teach you what Pastor John said, to give. It's going to teach you to deal with jealousy, lady. Women are particularly cursed with jealousy from Eve, and the Bible tells us that. Females carry jealousy from Eve. And I know lots of Christian ladies that are actually troubled with jealousy. You know, the Bible tells us anyone that's full of jealousy will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, the Bible tells us if we're full of hatred and unforgiveness, we'll not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you know what St. John tells us? That if you've got jealousy, hatred, envy and malice and anger in your life, you'll end up a murderer. You'll either physically murder somebody with your hands or you'll murder them with your, with your words. First John tells us that if Jesus is not allowed to come into your heart and cleanse you and deliver you from these wicked, wicked things from the fall, they will cause you to become a murderer, either physically or verbally. Is that true? Have you experienced that? I have. I have. When I've shut the door on Jesus, I, I get into trouble. I don't ever want to shut the door on Jesus anymore. It isn't a case of opening the door and saying, come in and shutting the door like we do at home. 
Jesus wants the door open and left open. He never wants it shut. Because they've asked to slip out for a minute. The old stuff's back in board again. Will you open your heart tonight and let him in? I don't care whether you've been a Christian 50 years. I don't care if you can pray in tongues. I've seen people pray in tongues and Jesus not in their heart. I've seen people that can give a great teaching and preaching and Bible study, but Jesus isn't in their hearts. He's not the master that rules their emotions. In the last days, Jesus tells us that he sends an angel to the churches and to the final day of the Christian church in the world, he sends an angel to that last church. And he says, in your heart is the love of money. In the heart is your love of your success. In your heart is the love of this world and the things of the world. He said, I'll tell you, you're lost. And he said to the angel, tell them this, behold, I stand at the heart's door and I knock. And if anybody will let me in, I'll come in and I'll clean them up. And I'll bless their life. And I'll live with them. And I'll walk with them. And I'll talk with them. And I'll be their God. Amen? Is he in your heart? Is he in your heart tonight? Oh, mentally you've asked him. But have you opened the heart store and said, come and take over my emotions. Come and take control of my life. Because I can't do a good job with it. And you know something about Jesus, I want to tell you. He'll never fail to come in if you ask him. Because he died on a cross to be able to come into your heart. You a nasty person. You a short-tempered person. What sort of person are you? A Christian, yes, but what sort of person are you? What's your behaviour like? What grudges are you carrying against somebody? What blame are you putting on your parents and everybody before you? What sort, of, what sort of heart have you got? Do you love the world? Well, John, that great disciple and the one Jesus loved much, said this, If in your heart you love the world, the love of God, who is Jesus, cannot live in your heart. If you love the world and the things of the world and you're in love with them, then God's love, his son, the son of love, cannot live in your heart. Oh, you can praise him. Oh, you can even serve him. You can even give to him. You can even come to communion. You can even come to the altar and, and praise him. But hey, unless he's in your heart, you're in trouble. If Jesus was to come tonight, if the world was lit up by war in the next week, say, and Armageddon comes, and I was reading about it today, and boy, I'm pretty sure we're close up. I was reading the book of Revelation. I was just studying what's currently happening in Israel. I've done this many times in my life as I've seen Israel and Lebanon and other people get to war, the Egyptians. But I tell you what, I went down the revelation today, step by step by step. And I can tell you, I can't think of anything else that's got to happen except all the nations come together to fight Israel. The fear is that if the Jews are touched too much, they will go a warring according to Revelation and they'll reach out throughout all that area 
which will encompass Syria, Iran, Iraq, <coughs> Palestine, and even Egypt, according to my Bible. And according to my Bible, the earth will be scorched by fire, and only the Lord will protect his own. Otherwise, all men would be burnt to ashes. Doesn't take much now in these days to kick that off. And why, why am I saying this? Well, I'm scaremongering? Well, maybe, but not really. I'm just trying to tell you, how's your heart? Because if the heavens and earth were to melt away in the Armageddon and the end of the world, what sort of heart would Jesus find? If Jesus came to your house tonight, and walked into your bedroom while you're in bed and looked into your heart, what sort of heart would he find? Would he see himself in there? Would he find the door open or would he find a lot of muck in there? You know, we Christians are called Christians because Christ is supposed to live in us. Not that we know everything about him, not that we can say everything about him, but that he lives in us that he may dwell in us richly. And tonight he wants to. And I just feel tonight there's probably one person that really wants Christ to come into their life and take over their emotions and make them into that man and woman that God planned them to be before they were born. Before the world was, God has a plan for every human being. And he has a plan for us to be godly. He has a plan for us to be a great man or woman. What's greatness? Not wealth. Not education. He plans that we'll be a great-hearted person full of God with a godly heart. That's his plan. And he wants to do that for you. He wants to do that for me. Let's um, have some music and sing it and we'll just bow our heads, everybody. And I'll open the altar. If you want to open up your heart tonight and let Jesus in, then you come down to this altar and kneel down here. And so I give you my heart. I open the door, Jesus. And I want you to take over my emotions. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity tonight while we still have breath of life in us to invite Jesus the Master into our hearts. Maybe, God, we've invited him in before but then pushed him out and left no room for him. But tonight we open the heart's door and we ask him to come in and to live in our hearts that he may control our lives. That he may control how we think and what we say and what we do and where we go. Jesus, thank you that you're alive and you've sent your spirit here tonight to enter into our hearts. Each one that's cried out to you in their hearts Enter in right now and take control within our hearts that we may be found worthy 
when our end comes and when the end of the world is wound up will be found as your brothers and sisters because we let you enter into our emotions and take control of our behaviour and how we think and what we say and what we do and where we go. You're beautiful, Jesus. And you weren't the right when you died on a cross like that up here on the wall. You weren't the right. And those nails were driven through your hands and those thorns into your brow and head. And those whips on your back and the spear in your side and the nails in your hands and feet. You weren't the right. You overcame all that wickedness in the heart of men. And you destroyed it on the cross and now you have the right to come in and destroy it and throw it out of our lives and to set us free. And we thank you, Jesus, you said some beautiful words while you were walking this earth. You said, if the Son of God sets a man or woman free, they shall be free indeed. And we thank you for that as we kneel and bow before you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Write down these names. Register them. That tonight they've opened the door of their heart again or for the first time. And Master, thank you, you are so beautiful. You didn't come to condemn us, you came to set us free. You didn't come to judge us, you came to love us. And we receive that love and we receive that freedom from you tonight to be able to live more like you. We want to be more like you, Jesus in what we say and what we do, where we go and how we react. Make us like yourself, Jesus, so that others can find you and experience you in their lives. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for being at this altar and this church tonight. And thank you for your message. May the Lord be praised and may the Lord be lifted up. And may his kingdom come alive in our hearts. You're so good. Our hearts are often so dirty. But you still come in and clean us up. And you bring us to the Father with his arms wide open for us. And you reinstate us back as sons and daughters of the Most High God. It is so beautiful, Jesus. We don't have English words to express to you how deeply we appreciate what you've done for us and your willingness to come and live inside a human being's dirty heart and clean it with the blood and empower it with the spirit and your own holy presence. Thank you, we can be a good godly hearted person not because of what we do but because of what you do Jesus when we open the door and let you in we thank you for so many stories in the Bible Old Testament and New where men and women opened their hearts and the door of their hearts and let you come in and live in them and we bless you for those examples but Lord thank you we can experience it tonight in this year under this very Lord's Day. Thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. Give us a holy heart. By your presence in there, you make our hearts holy. Come and present yourself and make us holy and good and righteous with Christian behaviour in all circumstances of our life. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. The Lord bless you. 
and the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. If you have been blessed by this message, please visit our website, neilthomasministries.com and click on the Donate button.